Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Keith Unger. Welcome back to our Ultimate Thyroid Health video series. This is video number 11. We're going to be talking about blood sugars and thyroid disorders. Okay? This is vital. If you have a thyroid disorders, you have to take a look at blood sugar problems. Okay? This is a huge problem out there. A lot of people are insulin resistant, have blood sugar problems, maybe they have anemia or fatty acid metabolism isn't working properly, the liver and gallbladder functions aren't working optimally, and these are basically four deal breakers. There are many, 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 many thyroid patients out there who don't have these four areas of their health in order. And this is why the population in the United States is addicted to carbohydrates. They're addicted to refined uh, sugar. Why? Because of the fast food they eat. They go to McDonald's at noon, it's packed. You look at Burger King, it's packed. It's junk food galore. People are in a hurry, always eating in a rush. Not a good thing for longevity, in my opinion. Now, people in the U.S. consume a grain-based diet along with addiction to the refined sugars, which can cause uncontrollable blood sugar levels. So basically, it's useless. I mean literally useless to try and address any thyroid condition as long as the client continues to consume a diet loaded with refined sugars and carbohydrate. So I ask my clients, how, are, how ready are you on a scale of 0 to 10, with 10 being the best or the highest, to make lifestyle changes? And if you tell me you're a 7 or less, you're not going to be my client. Why? Because I don't accept everybody that calls me or walks into my door. Okay? I'm sorry. I don't mean to be harsh. I don't mean to be cruel. I'm just telling you the facts. If you can't stop eating sugar and you're a diabetic or insulin resistant, there's no point. Now, I know some of you are worried and say, oh, I crave my crave my crave. Once we balance out your chemistry, those cravings will go away. But what happens is, is when we consume too many carbohydrates, our blood sugar goes up. And this causes our pancreas to release insulin. And the insulin goes out in our bloodstream to actually bring the blood sugars back down to normal. Now, when this happens over and over and over, the pancreas start to become overcompensating, sending too much insulin out into our bloodstream. And basically, this causes the blood sugars to become too low. And the adrenal glands then have to send out the hormone cortisol to help bring the blood sugars back up. So if your blood sugars are going up and down all day long, what's happening to your adrenal glands have to pump out cortisol to bring those up every time they go down. And this, uh, these hormones can cause stress, it can help, uh, it can impede your digestive health, uh, your immune problems, hormones, and thyroid function. So basically it's a vicious, vicious cycle. Now, dysglycemia, that's a term used when the body loses the ability to control your blood sugars. This can affect the adrenal function, which can usually end up in hypothyroidism. The adrenal glands are right here above your kidneys, okay? They're your stress glands. They release cortisol. The wrong foods such as cereals, pastries, pasta, if you have sensitivity to these, these can cause spikes in your blood sugars because the pancreas keeps pumping out too much insulin trying to bring the blood sugars down. Now, this is also a problem, especially if you have autoimmunity, because if you have autoimmune thyroid or Hashimoto's disease, a lot of these grains that you have that contain gluten, basically you're sensitive to, and basically they can cause that immune response. So, the question is, is do, how do you know if you have these things? Well, you have to be tested, and you have to be tested properly, and you have to run the proper test. As blood sugars go from high to low, mood and energy and mental cognition also goes from high to low. It fluctuates. This would be caused reactive hypoglycemia or low blood sugar. The drop in blood sugar usually occurs two to five hours after eating. This can be an early stage of insulin resistance and can lead you down the road to diabetes. Okay? So, let's take a look at this. A fasting blood sugar should be between 85 to 99. That's normal. Now, if a fasting blood sugar is less than 85, then basically you could be reactive hypoglycemia or have a, a low blood sugar problem. Okay? Now, what we do is we normally run a test. Okay? We do a fasting blood glucose test. We also do a hemoglobin A1C if we think you're diabetic. And basically what you do, you don't drink or eat anything for 12 hours. And basically, if your blood sugar, you go get a blood test and your blood sugar comes back, if it's between 100 and 126, you're usually insulin resistant, or your doctor will tell you you're pre-diabetic. Do they do anything? No. Then as you keep inching up, inching up, and they get higher and higher every time you have a blood test, once it's above 127 or higher on two blood tests, then they can give you the diagnosis of diabetes, get their prescription pad out, and start putting you on medications. What I'm seeing now in my clinic in the last couple of years is that they're starting to put people on diabetic medications even before they become diabetic, which is determined by a hemoglobin A1C level or a blood test level higher than uh, 127. Now, the hemoglobin A1C level must be above 6.4. So if you have a thyroid condition, folks, and you don't control your blood sugar levels, you're in serious business that you're not going to get well. Okay? That's what's going to happen. So. 
basically people with blood sugar problems, how do they eat? First of all, they get up, they usually miss the meals, especially breakfast. They eat foods with high sugar content. They crave salts and sugars. They rely heavily on caffeine to get through the day. You know, how do I know all this? Because they have patient's tractor diet. Also, there's a Starbucks about six buildings down from my Akron office, and it's packed every morning. And there's a line around the parking lot. And so if a person is having fasting blood sugar problems that's chronically low, this is called hypoglycemic, okay? This is usually caused by poor diet. Hypothyroidism can cause it, drug side effects can affect it, and it can also be caused by a tumor. So symptoms of hypoglycemia are fatigue, mental confusion, you may get shaky uh, in between meals if you haven't ate for a long time, you can get headaches, uh, you just feel very dull, sluggish, okay? Now a lot of times people with hypoglycemia are not able to get their normal blood sugar function back. So the only way to do that is you got to change the diet. You have to eat properly, you need every two hours. So if you're hypoglycemic, you need to stop eating junk food. You need to be tested to find out what food is right for you. So you need to change your diet, you have to eat healthy, and you have to at least eat every two hours. And you want to put in things in there for snacks like, you know, nuts and seeds and some vegetables, maybe a hard boiled egg if you don't have a sensitivity to that, or some type of good protein. Hypoglycemia and hypothyroidism are linked, most commonly by a sluggish pituitary gland. I talk about the gland up here in your brain, your traffic control tower. Helps control the hormones in your body. So we cover a little bit more about that in the six patterns of thyroid video. So the pituitary gland directs these hormones and chronic blood sugar swings and they cause the adrenal gland to stress out and this can dis then disrupt the function of the pituitary gland and this then can affect the thyroid. See how all they're interconnected? See how you end up in these vicious chronic downward cycles. So symptoms of hypoglycemia, you might crave sweets, you get irritated when meals are missed, uh, you rely on coffee, you have a coffee in the morning, then at 10.30 you've got to have another one to get you going again. You might get uh, lightheaded if meals are missed or shaky or jittery. You feel agitated and nervous. Uh, your memory gets bad. You're more forgetful. You, some of you may even get blurred vision. Like I said, metabolic syndrome is high blood sugar or in, uh, insulin resistance. And usually you can pick that up on a blood test. So if you have Hashimoto's, it's tough to lose weight. And I'm not blaming that. The chronic release of insulin to fight high blood sugar eventually causes the cells to become insulin resistant and that's going to allow you to store that extra sugar as fat and it makes it very difficult for you to lose weight. So, a person with metabolic syndrome is usually hungry all day long. Even after they eat a heavy meal, 15-20 minutes later they're still hungry. Okay, And a lot of you out there, you feel sleepy after you're eating. You eat a meal, you go to sit down and watch TV and what's happening? You're sitting there dozing off, right? And you want more sugar after every meal. So. Now we have to realize that insulin resistance can promote testosterone production in women, okay? Now, you see women, they have increase in facial hair, maybe a slight mustache, maybe the hair on top is thinning out or they're starting to go bald up there. A lot of that can be due to testosterone. Some of it can be due to a thyroid condition, but usually it's related to a testosterone hormonal imbalance, okay? Now, I say usually it's related because it's not in every case. So we have to look at other things. We have to look at polycystic ovary syndrome, okay? If you suffer from that, it's a blood sugar problem. We have a video on PCOS, check it out. Insulin resistance is also the driving force in Hashimoto's. Insulin resistance contributes to diabetes, sleep apnea, cardiovascular health, and of course obesity. What are some of the symptoms of insulin resistance? Fatigue after eating, constant hunger, craving for sweets, okay? And you're, you're not even satisfied after you eat a bunch of sweets. And then you want sweets after every meal. Difficult to lose weight, increase appetite, increase in thirst. Uh, your waist is equal or larger than your hips. And you may have frequent urination. So you need to check your blood sugar, folks. Just go to Walgreens or CVS, get a glucometer if you have to. You can do a blood test or a hemoglobin A1C blood test. Or you can do a, a blood test where they have you drink a syrup and then they test your, uh, your blood a couple hours after that to see how quickly it actually comes down. Now remember, the normal blood sugar range you want to be in is 85 to 99. Again, if you're 85 or below, you're trending toward hypoglycemia. If you're between 100 and 126, that's basically insulin resistance. And then once you get above 127 or higher, they tell you you're a diabetic. Okay? So, you should always check your blood work at least when you get up in the morning. Do it a few times a week. If you're a diabetic and you get into our program, you'll have to check your blood sugars three times a day. So hypothyroidism and blood sugar control, people with hypothyroidism need less insulin because low thyroid function slows the response of the insulin 
to the high blood sugars, which make glucose very slow getting into your cells, and that's where you make your energy. And because of this, a blood test will show normal blood sugar levels, but the persons will have the symptoms of hypoglycemia. So we look at different things on a blood test a little bit more differently than a traditional medical doctor. So what happens is the brain reads this as hypoglycemia, sends a message to the adrenal glands to increase your blood sugar. It releases cortisol, tells them bring the blood sugars up. So this is going to happen sooner or later. We have to realize that you have to have communication between the pituitary gland and your adrenal glands. This communication process is called the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. And it's also known as the HPA axis. Okay? Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. But what it's saying is that your pituitary gland and adrenal glands are not communicating and that feedback loop is lost. So dysglycemia diets are imperative for people who are insulin resistant or for hypoglycemic people to make changes in their diet. Okay? And believe me, uh, I have done it too. All right? Insulin resistance patients must cut way back on carbs and hypoglycemic patients cannot miss meals and they need to eat snacks that are not sugary in nature. So sticking to a proper diet will help stabilize your blood sugar, but it's very difficult at first. But there's nutritional supplements that can give you some support in that area. Okay? So to support a low thyroid condition, whether you're hypoglycemic or insulin resistance, here's a couple of suggestions I have for you. Number one, eat a high quality uh, protein breakfast. It's important. Okay? You have to know that if you're, if you, have, you have to understand that if your body doesn't think it's going to eat for a while, it's going to store most of that food as fat. Okay? So you need a high quality protein breakfast. Have a hard boiled egg in the morning. Eat a small amount of protein every two to three hours. This will keep your blood sugar stable. Okay? You can eat some nuts and we talked about seeds and some veggies uh, for snacks. That, that, that's a good source. Okay? So you have to get these things into your diet. And you can also try to find out your carbohydrate tolerance level. Now to determine this, uh, basically, um, it'll basically tell you how many grams of carbs you should eat each day. Now to find this out, what you need to do is this. If you eat something and you feel sleepy after eating this, or you crave sugar after you eat it, you've consumed too many carbs. Okay? These are foods like grain, including corn, legumes, potatoes, peas, and the sweets that you eat. All right. So if you're off gluten, and just because you're being off gluten doesn't mean that you're eating healthy, because there's a lot of other junk products out there that are high in sugar. So read the labels, even if they're gluten-free. But if you're going to consider getting off gluten, uh, maybe you should consider getting off dairy and getting off soy, because these are the three major causes of inflammation in the body. Make sure you do not eat high sugar foods without fiber, fat, or protein. When you eat uh, these sugary foods and you have protein in it, it slows down the release of sugar from these foods, and this slows down the release of glucose that is released into your bloodstream, and this will help avoid in, uh, big increases of insulin. Okay? Don't eat sweets before going to bed. This is one of the worst things a hypoglycemic can do. Okay? Because your blood sugar is going to spike up in the middle of the night. They're going to spike down. What's going to happen? Your body's going to release cortisol. Sometimes it releases a little adrenaline. And that's the type of person who wakes up in the middle of the night and can't get back to sleep. Avoid all fruit juices because they contain more sugar than soda. Okay? Just because it's a fruit doesn't mean it's good for you. If you want to have some fruit, guess what? Have it, but have a little bit of protein with it, okay? You have to realize that when you eat the whole fruit, instead of juicing it or taking an orange juice or something like that, you're getting the fiber in with that fruit. Now, you want to avoid adrenal stimulants, too. That's caffeine and these energy drinks out there. Those energy drinks are bad for you. So you want to eat a diet that consists of mostly vegetables, good meat, good sources of protein. You know, hopefully it's organic or grass-fed as much as possible. You want to eliminate junk food fast foods, processed foods, you want to remove allergens or food sensitivities or food intolerances that you may have. Because these food allergies or food sensitivities, they create that immune response causing blood sugar instability and insulin surges. Now gluten is one of the common ones for sensitivity and as I said along with dairy, soy, eggs, could be corn, could be potatoes. Everybody is different so you need to test for them. And you also need to eliminate parasites and toxicities if you have them. How do you know if you have them? You do a simple test to see if you have them then you eradicate them. Now, if you have any questions, please email me at drkunger at feohio.com. I'm Dr. Keith Unger, and thank you for watching this video.